Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Midweek Mindset. I'm glad you stopped by and uh, boy in the hustle and bustle the calendar is flying by. Christmas is in the rear view mirror and uh, we're quickly approaching New Year's uh, here in, in just a couple of days. So I wanted to uh, share a couple of things with you. You know a lot of people make New Year's resolutions and uh, I am not personally a big fan of New Year's resolutions. I am a uh, fan of, of making commitments and resolving to do something and, and making uh, um, commitments to make changes in our lives and in our habits and whatever the case is, but uh, not always calendar generated. Um, I think about some of the stories I've heard of people who uh, they're gonna start a, a diet New Year. So, they gorge themselves for three weeks before that of all these things they don't think they're going to be able to eat and somehow that seems counterproductive and <laughs> that's one of the reasons why i wonder if uh, if the new year's resolutions are the best thing um for folks sometimes but um and and we have to prepare i think if we're making um if we're resolving to do something making resolutions uh, it, it's not something that can be done spur of the moment and we need to prepare to do that, to be um, to ready, to make a, a, a serious commitment if we're going to make some changes. And uh, I think one of the most important things is when we go to make changes is the reason we're making the changes. What is the motivation? What is the purpose for those changes? What is the, what is the why is, is uh, the buzzword that is used in so many things today. What is your why for making a change? And uh, why well, say purpose? And I wanna share with you a couple of thoughts um, from scripture that, that maybe, maybe talk about the why um, in doing things. And the first one is in, uh, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, verses 31 to 33, and uh, Paul's been talking, they've been talking about um, meat sacrificed idols and about some social situations that they've been put into, and Paul comes back and, and concludes the, this section of, um, by saying in beginning in verse 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everybody in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And so Paul takes in, um, reminds them of a purpose. The purpose is to glorify God in what we're doing. Um, he said, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, whether it's going to work, uh, whether it, it's uh, going to the gym or whether it's it's changing your your lifestyle or your habits on some things along the way, what is your reason and purpose? Now, now losing weight can be a way to glorify God in that um, it, if your purpose is it would it improves my health, gives me an opportunity to do things where I'm not tired all the time, where I have the I can I can get down on the floor and play with the kids or the grandkids and get back up again and do some things like that and and it helps my attitude and I can I can thank God for that um, the time that I have and the ability to be able to do some things that I couldn't do otherwise maybe uh, I can be healthier and our 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 body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and I'm supposed to take care of myself so you can you see the purpose things that go with that maybe it's reading books or or whatever the case is maybe maybe you're you're resolving to read and and first of all if you're going to resolve to, to to read read your bible more if you're not right now okay read your bible more but it's also um hey i'm resolving to to read so many books a year on um specific topics or or things why maybe it's to sharpen my mind and improve my my grasp of some things, and and so that's good. We're we're supposed, you know, to be knowledgeable. But what is the reason and the purpose in doing things? And so I think that that uh, we need to keep that in mind. Um, if we're making a commitment to a calendar, um, if we're making a commitment to lose weight because we want to be back in a certain size, you know, or whatever the case is. Um, People fall off the wagon with a lot of the resolutions. They, they, uh, um, those go by the wayside. A lot of them don't make it to February first with their resolution. But 
it's resolve. It is a purpose. It is a commitment to something. And um, so I'm going to tell you that that uh, as you make commitments and, and resolve to do things, that think about think about a purpose that that glorifies God. Think about a, a commitment that uh, that you bathe in prayer and and prepare for um, in those commitments. And and uh, there there are so many things. Whether hey, if if my commitment is to control my temper or control. Uh, my tongue um, or control you know my thoughts or whatever the case is and of doing some things like that those are all fantastic resolutions and commitments but be sure that you are prepared to make those prepare that you are ready for those those are bathed in prayer and don't and and um, under remember also there'll be those moments where whatever the commitment is that you may fail for a day or for a week but if that commitment is made, um, and and it's a it's a with a godly purpose, um, then I th- I think that that will continue to drive us to perfection, to be of course like Christ, which is what we're called to, to be. We're to be conformed to the image of Christ, more like Him um, tomorrow than we were today. And so, uh, no matter what we're doing, if we're doing that for those purposes, I think that helps. And the other passage I want to read is out of Colossians chapter three. Uh, verses 12 to 17 and reminds us as Christians maybe um, in our, our purpose. Paul says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, Whether it in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And Paul gives us great attitudes. That's Colossians 3, 12 to 17. If you would go back and reread that as you um, prepare to make um, some commitments, to make some changes in habits and lifestyles, that, that there's the listing and there's the attitudes. It starts with attitudes in doing things. And, and a lot of the, the things that Paul talks about involves others by, by showing compassion and kindness, having humility, uh, gentleness toward one another. That, that those are the lifestyle characteristics that can really impact um, those around you. Um, reading, uh, being healthy, losing weight, a lot of those things can be beneficial in, in, in our spiritual walk even. But, but keep that in mind, um, the purposes behind commitments that uh, we're making. Have a great day.